Tara is going to tell you about Jane's Walk. And as I said in my email, Joanna also has amazing experience with Jane's Walk in a former life working with Tara. Um, we are excited to be having Jane's Walk in the state of Maine. We are eagerly looking for, uh, you know, three of our communities, maybe. We're, the bar is low, but we would love to have some of you participate. Um, show of hands, who knows what Jane's Walk is? Anybody? Carrie? Sarah? Oh, hi, Sarah Hansen. Okay, but none of our communities do. So this is gonna be interesting. Um, so Tara, I'll turn it over to you. Do you, are you sharing any slides? Do you need to yes, do that? But it looks like I have permission already. So thank you. Yeah, um, thanks, go for it. And before I do, I do wanna uh, acknowledge that, you know, I mean, I, I came in thinking that this was something that I wanted to, you know, kind of, it was already existing a little bit in Maine, but to amplify and promote given my experience, but. I saw Carrie at Martinis this summer wearing his Jane Jacobs pin and we got to talking and so we've sort of been scheming ever since. So I wanna acknowledge um, his kind of lighting the fire under, under this idea. Um, so with that, um, let me share my screen. Uh, just for starters, um, main preservation. I don't know how much of, how many of you know really what, what we're up to. So. I just wanted to just give a, a quick overview of the fact that we offer some technical assistance through our field services, financial support through some sub-granting programs. Uh, we hold easements, we help with tax credit projects. Um, we also market and help to sell historic properties. Uh, we have educational programs, and then we also do advocacy work at the local, state, and federal level. Um, so I guess I have to scroll. So here we are, Jane's Walk, NYC uh, in 2021. Um, sorry, gotta move my, my screens around a little bit here. So I can, so uh, before coming to Maine Preservation, as Anne said, um, I worked at the Municipal Art Society of New York, uh, which is the New York City organizer of the Jane's Walk Festival. Uh, Jane's Walk is a global festival of walking conversations inspired by the urban activist Jane Jacobs. Uh, New York City's program started in 2011 with just a handful of walks, and by, by last year we had uh, more than 300 walks happening across the five boroughs with as far as we could count, because we actually don't really require registration, uh, we had at least 6,000 humans out on the street uh, learning about communities. And in the virtual and digital version, we had tens of thousands more participating. Um, so started real small, got real big, um, and I'm hoping that we can, we can see some of that growth and opportunity here in Maine. So if you don't know, uh, Jane Jacobs is an activist and writer uh, known for galvanizing New Yorkers to fight against Robert Moses's plan to build an expressway through Greenwich Village. Uh, she was successful. Um, she wrote many books. She was a journalist uh, and she was really um, thoughtful about what she observed happening around her. She talked about sort of the, the sidewalk ballet on the street, those chance encounters and moments of opportunity uh, being so important to, to communities and to healthy, thriving communities. And so I think that that's where it's really relevant for you all as downtown to, um, to be able to celebrate some of her principles. Um, so, you know, she talks about, you know, eyes on the street, the fact, you know, low rise um, shopkeepers, you know, having, providing safety for communities because they're sort of watching what's happening out on the street. Um, she really prized old buildings. Um, so, you know, there's way more to learn about her uh, and, and better experts than I, but uh, this was uh, something that we worked on with a um, online news outlet celebrating her 100th birthday, uh, which was uh, a few years ago. She passed away in 2006. Um, but more, more than anything, she really believed in community engagement and the power of individuals to, to shape the places that they live. And uh, her 
principles of planning and participation and engagement have influenced uh, the ways communities plan their cities all across the globe. And so Jane's Walk as a festival takes place in two, more than 200 cities around the world. Um, and so just a couple of examples from New York. Uh, this is a walk that, that I went on. Um, this is uh, Sunny Hendry, who's from Queens. He was really interested in hip hop. And uh, so he led a walk in Times Square about, uh, it was called, um, Hold on, I need to make sure I get the title right because it's great. Hip hop nightclubs in the 1980s, fly fresh, wild and bold. And he brought a boom box and you know, stopped us outside each nightclub. Either it was maybe still there or maybe it wasn't. Played some music from some important moment in hip hop history. And the important thing about it is that Jane's Walk is not meant to be a formal tour led by an expert. Anybody can lead a walk. Um, you don't have to have done a ton of research. You know, maybe just talk about your enthusiasm for the topic and a little bit about what you know about it, and then encourage conversation with the participants. So, on this walk, uh, there were a couple of ladies um, who talked about their experiences at those nightclubs, and they'd be like, you know, I was there the night that Grandmaster Flash, you know did whatever and like it was just a really fun conversation where he was learning so much from the people who experienced it because he was significantly younger and so he was you know kind of learning from reading and watching videos but like these women had actually experienced that time and it was a great conversation. Uh, another popular one every year is uh, Gay Bars That Are Gone um, which is a tour through Greenwich Village where literally hundreds of people go and kind of trace um, the history of the gay bars that existed in in that community over time, and they, you know, use sidewalk chalk to like to mark those locations and kind of have a moment again of sharing where a lot of these people, young and old, have had personal experiences in those places, and it's just a really uh, kind of um, it's solemn but also uh, celebration of that history of place um, in the city. And then finally, and this is a special shout out to Joanna. Uh, this was one of my favorite walks ever that she helped to make happen. These are students from Medgar Evers College, which is part of the, um, is a community college in the city. And these students, instead of doing a class paper, they actually led a Jane's Walk and got credit for that. And so they each researched a little snippet um, because it's a community college, many of the students, you know, lived and grew up in the neighborhood. Uh, the topic was the African American history in Crown Heights, and um, you know, one one of the students got to share. Uh, you know, she lives in in a, an apartment building, which is the building that actually replaced Ebbets Field, where the Dodgers played. And she took us into the lobby of that building and talked about what it's like, you know, growing up in this place that is kind of notorious for actually, you know, removing some history. Um, but it was a really, really great, interesting um, and exciting walk to participate in. And the kids had a really great time. And, um, and they only did it because Joanna went and presented to their class. So um, that's kind of it quickly. I have some resources that I can share um, that we put together at MAS that's you know, focused on New York City. I can try to cull it down to the more important points for good tips on how to host, um, kind of create a host committee for your, for your city. Um, and then you know, also just straight up tips on, on how to lead a walk, how to promote it. Um, but the idea is the more that starts happening, you know, we use, we'll use a hashtag um, that it connects people to be aware of this one weekend happening every year. And I forgot to mention that it's the first weekend in May every year uh, in honor of Jane Jacobs birthday, which was May 4th. Um, so this year, I think it's the 6th, 7th and 8th. And um, year after year, when everyone knows that Jane's Walk is happening, uh, you start looking out for those for those walks and get excited and, you know, Plan, plan your weekend around all of these free walking conversations. Um, so I will stop sharing and 
answer any questions and that put was, a couple links in the chat. That was awesome, Tara. Okay. 300 walks and 6,000 participants in New York. That's crazy. And that's the ones that we could count because yeah. registration is not required. People can just show up. That's great. Um, Delilah put in, this sounds really cool. That's what I was going to ask you guys. Um, what do you think about this? First weekend in May, it is literally um, anyone can lead the tours. It does not have to be a typical uh, winter fest, Amanda. It doesn't have to be an event like that. Um, I think I just want to throw it out to everybody and say, what do you think? Anybody maybe think this would be something fun to offer in your downtown that weekend? Delilah's a yes. I see a couple nodding heads. I mean, it's um, the sky's the limit on creativity. That's for sure. And uh, I don't think it has to take a great deal of communication, not communication, a great deal of um, effort. I think it can be um, as low key as, as you want. I mean, if, if a downtown, let me just throw this out to Carrie, Sarah, and Tara, who's been our kind of our working group on this. If a downtown organization had three tours over the weekend or something, is that a reasonable way to play? Yeah, I think our goal is uh, here in Portland, where, where it, which has happened years ago, but hasn't happened in quite some time. And that's Glad to be having this conversation. Uh, we're five is, I would say, a huge success for us. If we get five, we're going to issue a call for volunteers to kind of host these informal ones. Uh, I don't know, somewhere late February, early March, something like that. Uh, we've got a handful of partner groups that we're going to soon be working with Portland Trails, uh, Friends of Congress Square Park, Greater Portland Landmarks, a variety of other groups. Um, uh, Portland Society for Architecture that we're just hoping everyone could take one on uh, and, and you know like my friend CJ at Congress Square Park he's already planning to host one about uh, how did he describe it uh, the, the the gargoyles of downtown or something like that that you just walk around and look, look for you know these places that you might not notice I mean it's that simple I'm, I'm doing one on the um, surface parking lots uh, and, um, you know, imagine places here is what I'm calling it uh, and talk about both the history and the future. So sim simple stuff. Maybe we'll end at a bar. I don't know. I will also share, you know, one of the ones I've always dreamed of doing and, and maybe I'll try to do it this year is doing a Jane's run. So I, I have a friend who is also a preservationist and he and I would go on runs together and sometimes we would run toward some, you know, he uh, has a blog about a modern um, mid-century mundane is what it's called. So really boring mid-century buildings. And uh, so sometimes we'd want to like go for a run so that he could go take a photo of a certain building. And like along the way, we would like, you know, kind of ogle, ogle the buildings. And so I was thinking about doing something like that for, for Jane's walk. But again, it's really not, it can be a more formal tour. So it, like it can be something that's kind of already in the books for you that you you know have a local historian who knows a lot or you yourself know a lot about your, your downtown. Um, but it can also uh, be really anything that you want it to be. I think the, the important things are that it's free, um, that it uh, has some kind of interactivity and engagement amongst the participants. And that's kind of it. Yeah, I was thinking like, Michael, do you think any of the UMA students would have something fun to think about in downtown Augusta? Or um, I don't know, others of you that, uh, I mean, Deb, obviously Bowdoin, I was just thinking of um, other groups, other partners to engage as uh, Carrie was saying, you know, he's not doing all the, the work. Um, he's reaching out to partners that may have an idea and want to talk about something. Deb. Um, we have a really active Pajet Scott uh, History Society that conducts uh, walking tours of the downtown uh, all summer long, which is absolutely great. And um, obviously, uh, the leaders, the, the conductor of the tour is very, very knowledgeable. So I think if we're going to do anything, uh, we need to know what we're doing we, so we can answer questions. We, and um, 
you know, it's, it sounds like it, it's not going to take a lot of work until you actually get into the weeds and, and try to figure out something in order to create a meaningful experience for those folks who do sign up because yeah, I can walk the streets with anybody <laughs> and I would love to do that. But unless I have some sort of a theme um, or I could turn this into a march instead of a walk and, and start bitching about sidewalks and trees, is that what I want to do? I, I could probably get a huge crowd behind me. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm assuming that this is supposed to be something fun, something interactive, something very positive. So. It, um, it, I have it, to think it, a lot on, about this one. I'll, I'll give an example of uh, something that was maybe a, a little less fun, but certainly was interactive and exciting, which was that uh, there was a, a proposal for a, um, a light rail system between Brooklyn and Queens that a group that was pro proponent of that wanted to walk a length of, of this proposal. And basically they're wound up, and so that was their Jane's walk. There was a counter Jane's walk, which was a protest of that um, because the communities didn't really want it. So there is, you know, a lot of flexibility and a lot of creativity about what it can be. And again, you know, it's, it's really, it's wide open. So I think that, you know, if you want to do a march and do some bitching, I think that that's totally fair game from, from Jane Jacobs perspective. I just wanted to add on the creativity side, um, another example, I think some of my favorite Jane's Walks were actually led by artists um, because they have really just interesting ways of looking and thinking about communities. And um, another one I helped organize in New York, I think Tara, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was the longest Jane's Walk ever um, going down the full length of Flatbush Avenue from, um, Dumbo out to Dead Horse Bay, it was 13 miles. And um, we led it in three different sections. And, and I was the only one that actually did all three sections with the artist. Uh, everybody else kind of dipped in here and there, but um, he was a found objects artist. And so as we did this walk, he essentially stopped um, to talk about things that he had found and incorporated into artwork in different places and how they were connected to the history of that place. Um, so it really, it really can be, you know, fun and light and interesting and, and creative in terms of the approach, um, in addition to a lot of great Jane's Walks run by historians, of course. <laughs> um, we also had a couple of bike, bike rides that were Jane's Walks, so throwing that out too. There was a Jane, a couple of years ago, there was a Jane's Dog Walk. Also. Oh, was fun. Yeah. And Joanna, I think the Flappish one was, was overtaken by a walk that was the full length of Manhattan. Um, so, wow. sorry. And Bill, challenge, just, challenge accepted. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, I mean, the sky's the limit. Trail connectivity, you know, I, I think there's youth. Um, and Bill just put up a, a sticker. You want to throw it in the, and it's, I don't know if you can see it. It says, walk with your banker. So that was a program that was done in Rockland and um, that guy on the sticker was the president of the Main Street organization at the time. And he, it, it's a slightly different purpose, but I think it could be merged into a Jane's walk. He would just walk the Main Street with anyone that wanted to join him to talk about downtown issues. So it had a kind of uh, downtown engagement purpose, but I'm thinking Bill could, the banker, or the, the president of the Main Street just uh, lead a walk talking about, you know, projects that have been done, change. I mean, it, like like Tara's been saying, it's really like meant to be creative um, and any possibilities exist. So thanks for sharing that, Bill. <laughs> uh, any other ideas, questions? Um, anybody interested beside Delilah maybe of um, participating? Uh, without it, you may, you know, sometimes early May, you don't have stuff going on. Um, it's still kind of not the high season. Um, you can think about it. So just to be clear, participating could include you all leading walks or it could include you all just putting the word out to see if there were other 
folks in your communities that were interested, right, Anne? Or are we yes. looking specifically for the directors to lead walk? No, 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 no. Anybody, okay. any partner. Um, Carrie said he's best case scenario is five in Portland. And that's why I threw out the number three in a Main Street community is like, maybe, maybe it's only one and that's okay. I think we just ideally would like to um, see if we could get three Main Street or affiliate organizations to participate in this inaugural year of Jane's Walk, our little coordinating group, which consists of Tara, Carrie, Sarah Hansen, Joanna, um, and uh, me, and CJ from Friends of Congress Square, are going to help uh, figure out how to kind of promote it statewide. Um, but this isn't meant to be a big lift. It's to dip your toe into Jane Jacobs. Um, Delilah, you were going to say something. Um, just that I, I've only I've heard of Jane Jacobs a few times over the years, and I kind of like the opportunity of learning more about her. And then I was just picturing, um, you know, we could use Main Street Maine as a platform to to share, like you know how Thierry does, um, kind of combined articles. Like here's your ten or twelve or fifteen um, walks happening uh, in in the Main Street community this this coming week, something like that. Um, so I think I think in Biddeford there'd be somebody who wants to lead this, even if it isn't me. There's some artist or his, historic preservation, you know, Biddeford Historical Society or something. So I intend to do it as effortlessly as possible. Mm -hmm. So for learning more about Jane Jacobs, uh, there's a documentary that came out a couple of years ago called Citizen Jane, uh, which is a really great and easy primer. I think it's on Hulu. Um, and uh, there's, I was just searching to see if I could find a quick link, but I'll, I'll keep working on that. Um, yeah. The other thing I want to say, just in terms like the New York City's program grew over time um, to be as large as it is, the, the real benefit that participants, I think, um, you know, all of our partners, MAS didn't do it by itself. There were a lot of individuals, but it was also a lot of you know, smaller local groups who really saw the value that the promotion that comes from everyone coordinating something at the same time. Um, and so, you know, at this point now, there is a couple, and Joanna, do you remember? I think they're from Hawaii. They come to New York every year for Jane's Walk weekend because they get to like look at this roster of really fun things, fun free things to do all over the city. Um, so it's, become, I think, just a great like marketing tool for mm -hmm. all of those individuals and for those neighborhood groups to, you know, be in the same pool together. And so, you know, MAS at this point has a dedicated website for this that um, draws all those eyes. So those 6,000 plus, however many are, those are people who've registered, but like many more people actually show up and many more people are just scrolling the pages and looking at who's there. So there's a tremendous opportunity at the end of the day to be raising awareness about the work that, that you're doing. Yeah, I'll, I'll just add, well, Abby uh, Levin also has shared that she has tried three times to go to Jane's Walk in New York. So she also saw it as a, as a destination and each time, unfortunately, something interfered. But um, I'm also remembering just the kinds of places that we advertised once the festival grew to a certain um, size, uh, like uh, it would appear in Time Out. Um, we had subway ads, we advertised on um, WNYC, like you know the, the public radio station. And, and it really, um, I think just expanded our reach um, hugely, right? Beyond just the, you know, in this case, it would be the kind of usual suspects of downtown engaged folks. Um, in MAS's case, it was, you know, beyond the usual kind of land use advocacy, historic preservation crowd. So um, in terms of just an engagement opportunity and to, it, it appeals to so many different kinds of people. I'll yeah. add to you, the gay bars that are gone actually had a full write-up in the New York Times, um, which I'll, I'll look for too, but so it really does draw a lot of people, that, like Joanna said, the, the unusual suspects into right. the work that, that everyone is doing, which is great. I, I think that's the huge secondary benefit for you guys thinking about this is you are going to engage potential different audience, um, new partners, um, and this kind of really creative look at your downtown. Um, 
So I, I think it's really cool. Um, I hope you guys will consider it and we'll uh, develop some more formal communication um, from the planning group and from MDC just to be like, who's in? Um, a couple things in the chat, uh, Michael referenced um, the actual very famous, The Death and Life of Great American Cities book. Um, and also um, we will get you the link to Citizen Jane. And then uh, Amy mentioned Eat, Drink, Lucky, which of course is an amazing online platform. It would be a great uh, position to have this in the lucky section, I think, right? Um, at when it's a, anybody know what Eat, Drink, Lucky is before I ramble on? Yeah, it's a small little digital platform that comes out daily with something yummy to eat, something yummy to drink and something happening um, statewide. And I've forwarded it to a few of you when things happen that are in your communities because it's a real cachet thing to be listed in. Um, okay, any last questions for uh, Tara, Carrie or Sarah before they um, are welcome to um, not stay for our second second bit or you're welcome to stay. Um, and hi, Karen Tucker. Um, thanks for joining us this morning. So, uh, and the link to uh, Citizen Jane is in uh, the chat as well. So, and we'll send you the free chat. Free on Hulu, but it's also paid, like you can, you can rent it on Amazon and, and a Great. bunch of other places. Thanks. Thanks for kicking us off with this idea. Um, for May 